How you guys doing? I hope you had a good networking break. You got your TCP IP on, and there's some SYN acts that happen out there. Uh, so welcome back. Um, Stephen Wabro, the co-founder CTO at Halborn. And I have uh, 10 minutes to do a demo on probably one of the most sophisticated smart contract platforms here, too. Um, I want to tell you a little bit about Serif, which is something that we've worked on for quite some time. And uh, you know, where it originated from, you know, back a few years ago when we were doing a lot of the smart contract assessments, we kept on finding functions from developers that were like withdraw all or emergency withdraw liquidity. And we talked to the developers and say, you know, this is a kind of an issue here. Whoever owns those keys can just, you know, essentially, uh, if you've heard the term rug pull before, uh, that rug can be pulled there. And, you know, so that's, we need to put that on the report. You know, that's an issue. They're like, oh, no, 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 it's, uh, it's accepted risk. Like, we know about that. We want to keep that there. I'm like, oh, okay, that's awkward. How do we handle this one? Um, so usually I, we came up with an idea. Uh, it, it originated, I have shower thoughts. Like, my best idea is come in the shower. I don't know if anybody else has that. It's, it's a thing. So I was like, man, I think, I think I have a concept here. So I talked to some of my peers and uh, myself and Ferran, who you'll see later today, uh, one of our principal architects. Um, formulated this over the past couple years to make something called Serif. And it's evolved into a very large system that solves a lot of problems. And I could say this un totally unbiasedly, uh, it's the only enterprise grade uh, solution available right now for smart contracts. It does so many things for not just securing, but for uh, managing policies on smart contracts. Uh, it can also be considered intrusion prevention you know, to prevent that, that rug pull or, or the theft of liquidity or many other things too. Uh, it could be a function firewall. So all of the functions on smart contracts, you can do automated decision logic with that uh, based on your own policies. And it could be segregation of duties. So you know, policy engines can also be sort of like an active directory type on chain. And uh, one of my favorite features of what I like to describe it as is like transaction level audits. So people come to Halborn and we do audits of your entire smart contract, hope that we did a good job, put it on chain, and you know, I hope they didn't miss anything and they don't get there. Uh, so, but with this, you can actually, you know, as a transaction happens on certain functions, you could you know, decide, is this safe or is this, are we gonna prove it? And it's also non-custodial, and this is a big, big deal. Um, so there's a couple use cases. I, you know, I'll briefly run through these very quickly, but um, we're going to do a demo because you know, slides are not a demo. Uh, you can use it for authorizing withdrawals. You can notarize a loan. You could verify changes if you do like admin upgrades or privilege management changes, and many, many more. It's really it's up to you. Whatever you, your business logic is when you uh, program a smart contract, it lives in the contract to help you protect or approve or manage that policy in the business logic. And why I say it's enterprise class, I think some of the main barriers for a lot of tools, and a lot of usage is um, you know, one of three things. First one is around just ease of use. There's a lot of complexity in having to manage keys and distribute keys, and you know, some of the only other things we see right now are multi-sigs, you know, like there's some great platforms like Gnosis Wallet you know, will allow you to distribute keys. And then also the custody for doing you know, sharding of keys and just you know, having uh, MPC. And it can be kind of complicated to manage all of that. So it actually uses your OAuth. Uh, you connect a uh, single sign-on to a key signing backend. It'll generate a key for you without, you know, it's the abstraction of that to make it easy. So you can use your role management uh, that you already have established in your uh, single sign-on and leverage that to sign transactions. Um, it supports all EVM. So this is an EVM, uh, this permission of quorum for all the way to mainnet. I'm going to do the demo to show you on mainnet. And you can choose to host it on your own RPC endpoint. You know, kind of have it uh, be you know, on your own data center or your own permission blockchain. Or you can use it as a service, which is a, kind of a managed endpoint that Halborn um, has set up. So it's also, uh, the other big problem is around like the custody itself. You know, there's some weird issues that come up when you have to co-sign something with customers uh, if they want to withdraw something and you have to share a key from them and, or you have a partner at, in the business unit that you have to co-sign there. 
So this really allows you to not have to worry about that you're signing a serif contract. So we're going to go over that in just a second. So let's go into a demo. Um, I was advised to not uh, do it live because who knows, maybe the gas prices are like $3,000 and I have to like do that and pay all the money for demo here. So I, I recorded this uh, not too long ago. So here what we're looking at is the serif. On the right side is the serif front end. Um, and you can see here when you're logging into it as an institution, your platform, you're logging in with your email. We use Gmail or the G Suite for now um, to get in there. And all the protections you have, like the two-step verification, um, you have uh, you know, your text messages, or if you have uh, an authenticator, you're still going to be using that. And you log in to uh, your own interface. It, so here what you're looking at is you know, all the different networks. It, it supports every EVM platform. And we're going to do the one straight on the Ethereum mainnet. So the right side uh, that you're looking at, the blue one, it would be the, you know, the serif uh, approver, or the policy approver. And the left side is the, you know, the, the going to be the client. That's uh, Etherscan. You know, there's a smart contracts on there. So when you log into the mainnet, you can see on the right side all of the different um, transactions that have had policy approval or decisions uh, done previously. On the left side, you know, this is an actual smart contract that is on the mainnet right now, and it'll have a serif proxy contract. That's what serif signs. It lives on chain, and it holds all of the transaction uh, decisions, the, you know, the approval or the, 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 the denies. And the smart contract itself now, we swooped over and looked at you know, the vault contract. This is the one that uh, we're going to have a, a client sign. And you can see the with serif, this is called a modifier. If you guys uh, don't know much about smart contracts, you, all you do is you integrate a modifier on the function that you want to protect. Everything else, if you don't want to have, if it's not a high risk, you don't have to worry about uh, adding a modifier to it. It functions just as nor like a normal smart contract. So we have the withdraw all um, function that has the serif modifier on it that lives in there. And we're going to uh, send a transaction onto the mainnet with that. So you know, the client is sending 124 because it's January 24th. Um, so 124. And we are then signing it with uh, you know, MetaMask wallet like one normally would. But this could be anything. It could be a, a, a D app that you have. Um, it's still going to end up being a transaction that is signed with the key and going to the contract. All right, so it signed it. It's sent there to the withdrawal of 124. And we see how that this transaction hash not found on Ethereum yet. That's because it's actually pending um, in a kind of a mempool you know, sort of thing, but it's, it's a private mempool. Uh, it's not, there's no front running risk or anything around that. You know, you're not going to see flash bots or other adversaries kind of get in there. So it's being sent to the mempool. And you can see now on this side, a few seconds ago, we have a transaction from that demo vault. So this is where you, know, you can hook this into a notification engine. Uh, it could be an email, text message. If you have like PagerDuty or something, you're going to say, hey, you have uh, a policy to approve. Uh, this is the data. We see that value 124 on that function withdraw all. This is the client. And you know, the workflow for this, totally up to you uh, at your, uh, your organization, depending on how you want to treat it. Maybe this is a, you know, a lending or, a, or borrowing type of uh, function here. And you know, 124 is how much we want to withdraw to lend them and say, that's way too much. They're not approved for that. Um, we're going to reject it. So you know, the logged in user, you know, myself here, uh, rejects that. Say, nothing, nothing that high. That's, that's too much. We're not approving that. Or, you know, we're not going to do that on Fridays. So what we just did, we signed with our, uh, a serif key. It generated a unique key to sign that serif contract on mainnet. We're not signing that vault. You know, we're sending the policy decision into the contract. Okay? So the policy decision was, of course, reject. Now I'm going to refresh the mainnet and see that the transaction is not approved. Fail. Fail with serif. Transaction not approved. So if you guys are familiar with, with the way uh, you know, smart contracts work on Ethereum or any blockchain, that's very, very novel and very unique because most things are very reactive uh, when it comes to blockchain security. It's always threat intelligence or monitoring or watching the chain and seeing, oh, we see some malicious actor uh, just withdrew something. We need to pause the contract or we need to you know, enable some type of you know, 
analytics to go find where the liquidity went to. It's very reactive. That's, that's something that you know, is in the nature of blockchain being immutable and you know, decentralized and distributed, things are very reactive. You know, this is a preventive solution. Uh, if you look at it from security. So this is now preventive. Uh, it's, it, you know, we don't even have to worry about there being an issue that we have to respond to. So now we sent another one in there, uh, 125 instead, just iterated one. So you know, you know, even numbers are not okay, odd numbers, that's my policy. My policy is if you have a, an odd number, I'll prove it. You know, whatever it is, it doesn't matter. So uh, policy is, you know, we prove it. So same thing, the, uh, maybe the underwriter or whoever is you know, logged in from that, uh, that role. Um, goes in there. Now, they could have, you could also simulate um, these uh, transactions too, like put it inside of a sandbox and see what happens here. So it's approved, you can see now, it, then it comes out, goes to the mainnet, and completely transparent to uh, the actual end user that originally signed that transaction. We see it's successful, and the, you know, the transaction was there. So that was both, uh, both cases. Um, the other aspect, too, is managing the platform itself. So how do these contracts actually get covered with Serif? So you know, think of this as a uh, security platform where now you have the Serif uh, operations engineer. Uh, they're the ones that do the back-end administration. Um, it, built into it is a way to you know, add new smart contracts to uh, your own Serif implementation. You could set functions as protected. You can add new clients, uh, which are actually you know, other smart contracts on there. Um, put the logos on them, and it's just managed through APIs. Um, so these APIs uh, that you know, carry out all these transactions to update your Serif instance, uh, this is you know, that hosted environment that um, I had mentioned from before. So I just sent one in here. You can see Steve's contract on there. You know, it's, it's client management. You can kind of compare this to like, maybe an antivirus solution that you have um, on your own uh, you know, platform in your network where you have your antivirus master console that deploys out agents, and then you have your AV engineer that is uh, you know, managing updates and you know, doing this. So um, that's, that's the back end here. Uh, there's also, um, if you choose to have a front end to, to see it and make it nice and fancy instead of ether scan, uh, this is where you can look at it from the user standpoint. Um, if you want to be transparent, you show you all the things for the mainnet demo vault that I just gave you and see all the transactions there. So that is a quick demo of what Serif is in 10 minutes. It does a lot, uh, so I try to pack it all in there in one. Um, if you have any questions about it, please, uh, I'm around here all day. Make sure you stick around and see my talk on AI and blockchain and the role they play together. Um, it's a pleasure seeing you. Thank you very much, guys.